Okay, suppose we have a train accelerating with an acceleration of 2t meters per second squared during the, during the time from t is equal to 2 to t is equal to 4. Uh, and we know at, when it, at the beginning of this interval at t equals 2, it has a velocity of 20 meters per second. So we want to find out how fast is it going at t equals 4 and how far did it go during this 2 second interval. Um, you know, we could have just started our interval at 0 and gone somewhere else, but this is just annoying. Uh, for you guys, but I made it that way because your chances are you're going to see a problem like this more likely on your test than an easy one that starts at zero. So this will make you more prepared, hopefully. All right, so let's start out with our expression for acceleration is always the rate of change of velocity, dv over dt. Okay, so now let's continue on. We will separate our variables just like we've been doing in all of the videos leading up to this one. We should be getting pretty good at this by now. So we'll get dv is equal to a dt. All right, and we'll continue in this way. Um, now we we do know what a is, right? So we can write that in. So dv is equal to well, what was it? Two t. That's our a dt. Okay. So now we want to integrate this. Um, maybe let's come down here and write the integration. So the integral of dv. Uh, is equal to, well, the constant will stay on the outside, right? So it'll be like this times the integral of t dt. Now we want to use definite integrals just like we've been doing. So we will put in our limits here, our boundaries for integration. So we will have from v naught to v, and then we will have from t naught to t. But we're considering the interval of 2 to 4, right? So we can say this is equal to 2. And remember we said that v naught at 2 seconds was equal to 20. So we can go like that. Now I'm actually going to leave, well we don't know this, the, we don't know that the velocity will be after point 2, right? We don't know that yet. Um, and we, we do know that at the end of the interval, um, the velocity or the time would equal 4. But we're going to leave this as t and you'll see why it'll just make our lives a little bit easier when we're trying to solve for position because we will need a variable. So anyways, we will just go through with the integration now. The integration of dv is just simply v uh, from 20 to v. And this is 2 times the integration of t, so we get 2 times 1 half t squared, and these obviously cancel out with each other. Uh, and this was from 2 to t. Okay, so let's just keep going with this, and we'll uh, fill out these. So we get um, what we can do it below, I suppose. We get v minus 20 is equal to uh, t squared minus 2 squared. Right, this is minus 4. So we get v is equal to t squared minus 4 plus 20, which is equal to mm, t squared plus 16. t squared plus 16. So this is our expression for v, right? So uh, now actually what we can do is we can solve right now for how fast is it going at t equals 4, right? So if we had v at 4 is equal to 4 squared uh, plus 16. You know, sometimes I like writing the variable right beside it, right? So just to clean it up, so t is, or v is equal to t squared plus 16, right? So now we're not getting confused anymore. Nice big bold border around it. Anyways... <clears throat> So v, uh, the velocity at time is equal to 4 is um, 4 squared plus 16, right? So v at t equals 4 is equal to 16 plus 16, which is equal to 32 meters per second. So check it out. We're done the first part of the problem. We could easily find also uh, the velocity at any time now that's, you know, doesn't have to be 4. So that's also helpful. But now we want to move on to part two, where we're solving for uh, how far did it go during this interval. So we do know that, you know, maybe we'll change colors so we, can, uh, we won't get confused for part A and part B, or part one and two or whatever. So anyways, we have V is equal to the rate of change of position, right? So V is equal to DS for DT. This never changes. This is like a true fact that you should know. Um, but what we can do is we can rearrange the variables as usual. So we'll get uh, ds is equal to v dt. Again, we just brought that up. Okay, so 
integrate both sides now and we do know v so maybe we'll do one more step where we just write what v is so we have ds and our description for v our equation uh, our equation for v is right here we found it so it is t squared plus 16 this is all dt right so when we integrate this we can go over here to save space we get ds integral of ds is equal to integral of t squared plus 16 dt okay now we put our bounds on for our integration and we have oh where are we s naught to s and t naught to t okay so what we want to do actually if we just uh if we define s naught as zero and just forget about all of the distance it traveled up until the point t equals two then that's going to make our lives a lot easier so we're going to do that and then we will only be considering the distance it travels after t equals two so we'll change that to zero and also remember t naught this is equal to two okay so we'll proceed with our integration the integral of ds is just equal to s from 0 to 2. Uh, this is equal to, well, the integral of t squared is going to be 1 third t cubed. This will be plus 16 t. And this is all, this whole expression here goes from 2 to t. Okay, so we'll uh, keep going. So we get uh, uh, substituting, substituting these in, we get, hmm, oops, no, that's an S. I can't even read my own writing sometimes. I look like a two. Okay, so that's not a two, that's an S. There we go. So we get S minus zero is equal to one third T cubed plus 16 T. And I hope you see that if we uh, subtract, oh yeah, so I guess we keep going. So now we plug in the two, minus one third two cubed plus 16 times two. Okay, so we'll, we'll head on over here to save some space. And what we're gonna do is if we just, uh, if we simplify this part here, we will get s is equal to one third t cubed plus 16 t and this part reduces to um, i just did this it was minus 34.7 now you can just punch it in your calculator and that's what you'll get all right so now what we want to do is uh because we considered s uh is equal to zero at time is equal to two we just need to find the distance that travels uh, basically after after that point so we can just substitute in t is equal to 4 so we get distance travel to s you know s is equal to 4 seconds we get 1 third times 4 is cubed plus 16 times 4 minus 34.7 all right, uh, now if we just go through, do all these calculations, uh, we get the distance at four is equal to it's about 50.6, right? That's just doing that math. And uh, this is the, the distance that's traveled, right? Because we said the distance at, um, well, s is equal to two, or time is equal to two was zero. So this is just the distance that has traveled since that. So not including the distance that it traveled before s is equal to two. So anyways, there we have it. We found the velocity, like the question asked. Velocity uh, at four seconds is 32 meters per second. The time it traveled between two seconds and four seconds is 50.6 meters. And there we go. I'll see you guys in the next video.